Let's move to our second discussion. Nigeria's economic potential is constrained by many structural issues, including inadequate infrastructure, tariff and non-tariff barriers to trade obstacles to investments, lack of confidence in the currency valuation, and limited foreign exchange capacity. There are also issues around sustained broad-based economic growth and poverty reduction, which is critical to its economic stability. Efforts by successive governments to improve agricultural productivity and expand jobs in rural areas have also yielded little results. The country's economic growth is also constrained by insufficient electricity generation capacity, which results in lack of reliable and affordable supply of power. And while the federal and state governments are mourning the sustained loss of jobs and underemployment, the dwindling consumer spending helped by low wages inflation is also driving manufacturing sector out of business. Well, let's dissect these economic issues and, of course, uh, provide some solutions. My guest is Mr. Tajuddin Ibrahim. Is Tajuddin, but yes, he is the director of research and strategy at Chapel Hill Denham. He's also a capital market specialist. Thank you so much. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me on. Yes, I'd like to start this discussion this way. We talked about inflation, interest rates, forex, and all of this hitting the economy so bad. But one new one now, flooding, has also taken part of, of, uh, of our country. Yes, no joke. And it's affecting rice farms, affecting movement of food produce all across uh, the country. Now, what implication do you think all of this have for a struggling economy like Nigeria? Well, I think for us to be candid, the implications are significantly negative for the economy, particularly if you consider the fact that we are currently struggling on the uh, you know, fiscal policy side in terms of income generation for the government. So when we have you know, challenges such as flood, insecurity, that for that compound, um, you know, the further compound our, our problems uh, as a nation, and you know, it, it will need, um, you know, a substantially different approach to how we have, you know, solved, uh, you know, problems in the past. If we do, you know, things the same way we we're doing them previously, we are unlikely to get the required results. So we have a lot of negative. Uh, in the factors, you know, negatively impacting the economy, the country as a whole, and Nigerians at large. So we need, we need, you know, the right responses that are unusual or responses that, you know, we have not adopted in the past to solve, you know, the current challenges to move us forward um, as a nation. Hmm. Well, a good way to start, uh, but I, I would say that some very, very strict or some decisive moves must be taken uh, because many will talk about uh, when you have a critical situation, you also take critical uh, decisions at that time. Now, what are these quick decisions we could take? Many have said that we need to save more. Many have said we need to eliminate subsidy. How do we balance up and we are moving towards an election? So yes, you're absolutely right that, you know, we are moving towards an election. And this is re the reason I said, um, you know, the government, you know, really needs to do something and they have to do it, you know, very quickly, um, you know, so that we, we do not have, um, you know, we have a peaceful election and also, um, you know, there will be retained confidence in the, you know, current administration and also in the, the new, you know, sort of, you know, president that will take over, whoever that person is. Um, so, so the starting point to my mind, you know, will be for them to have the political will and, you know, the political will to implement and execute, you know, those changes. One of the key elements of those changes to my mind is the removal of, you know, fuel subsidy. If we take a look at Nigeria as we speak, we currently pay, um, you know, almost our income. I mean, the government revenue, uh, almost all of it goes into debt servicing. And that is happening partly, in large part, because we, 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 we remove subsidy from the revenue at the top. And we are always talking about 
you know, direct net revenue. So if subsidy is removed, for instance, then we will have you know, you know, larger revenue that you know, can go into uh, you know, key projects uh, around infrastructure. You know, we would have you know, funds to also service debt and also be able to uh, you know, take charge in terms of you know, funding uh, recurrent expenditure. So, all, so, so, so removing the first subsidy may be a, a good way to start, but the government have said that is, it, that is not happening until you know next year so we we have to wait to that time and i'm hoping that you know they will implement it instead of pushing it further forward the increase in rates that we've seen well it's like a global thing is happening almost everywhere where central banks have to raise rates one way or the other to rein in on inflation but it seems not to be working here what is wrong or do you think uh, we, we, uh, we're in a transition period, maybe it's still going to take some time and we'll have the impact of that move by the Apex Bank. 15.5% so like, is where we are now. Yes, it is more like the second thing that you said, you know, there'll be a time lag in terms of, you know, policy decision and implementation and mm. how, you mm. know, the economy and the broad market, you know, respond to, you know, such policy changes. Uh, or decisions made by the, by the CBN in this case. Um, and, and that is what I believe is, is currently you know, playing out. We, we have to bear in mind that the, the CBN have all the tools to, to fight inflation. And the only ones that are within their reach is number one, um, you know, interest rates adjustment. Number two, liquidity management in the financial system. If we combine these two, which are largely speaking, you know, the major tools that they have, um, you know, within them, they are, they are currently implementing those two. Um, and, and I think, you know, there'll be like a time lag before, you know, those, you know, begin to reflect on the economy and also, um, you know, in the pocket of, you know, every consumer in Nigeria. Nevertheless, all of us have to bear in mind that you know we are going to you know you know feel some pains in, in the short term, uh, you know, just so that you know these things will correct over time. Mm. Uh, the minister is still optimistic when she was speaking on the sidelines uh, of the IMF meeting, where she talked about growth of 3.7% in 2022, despite all of this global head, global and of course domestic headwinds. Do you share that sentiment? Well, I, I do, you know, and, and I think, you know, 3.5, 3.7% is a growth rate, you know, that Nigeria can achieve. In, in fact, if you take a look at Nigeria, we are growing below our potential, um, you know, as the largest economy in Africa, well, around, you know, 216 million people and our output is growing at a rate that is much similar to the, the rate of you know, the growth of our population. So, so it is not you know, as good as we would have loved it to be. But the reality is that in the short term, a 3.5, 3.7 economic growth rate in Nigeria um, you know, is achievable, particularly if we bear in mind what is happening in the all sector of the economy where there are currently looking to, um, you know, address all those, you know, challenges around oil theft and also attacks on installation of oil, um, you know, assets. So if you capture all those, and we bear in mind also the strong non-oil sector of the Nigerian economy, you know, I, I think it is natural for us to agree that a 3.5, 3.7 uh, economic growth rate is achievable nevertheless. That is not where we should be. We should be much higher at high single digits, or we should be at double digits even as a nation. Allow me to stay with food because it's very important. We must eat. Everyone must put something on the table. Uh, with this fear concerning we already were grappling with insecurity, now flooding is going to affect rice production in some states and, of course, livestock and all of this. What kind of food security package should we be looking at uh, at the moment, or what can we do so that we are not um, cut hands down? 
Thank you very much. I think one key area that, you know, at Chapel Hill Dynamo that we believe the government should be focusing on is infrastructure. And that infrastructure, um, you know, captures things around, you know, transportation system for farm produce. Um, also things around, um, you know, storage system and storage facility for farm produce. And, you know, if we have all those at, you know, top notch levels, you know, we shouldn't be panicking when we have, you know, short term challenges around, uh, you know, food production, either because of flood or because of, you know, some sort of insecurity. It is because we do not have, you know, good road uh, infrastructure. We do not have, you know, good storage facility. So if we have all those in place uh, as part of our infrastructure plans, you know, chances are that when we have, you know, challenges such as such as we are currently facing, we will be able to to fall back on uh, on our storage. But in in the with, with the current situation, my sense is that Nigerians are going to see you know higher you know food prices uh, on the back of you know flooding um, in some you know selected part of the country. But you know by the time we turn to next year, those um, you know effects should have sort of normalized. And we should begin to see prices, you know, either being stable because of higher output, or you know, the increases we will see will be very marginal, in my view. Let's shift our focus to manufacturing. And one big news today, everywhere is the minister talking about a special window for manufacturers, of course, to access forex. We know what's been happening with regards to that market, and the disparity continues to widen uh, by the day. We know what it is. Uh, the other market at the moment, and that's where most manufacturers get this uh, foreign exchange from. Creating another window for manufacturers, is, is that the way to go? Well, I think, you know, so we, we just have to manage in this case. We, we have to just, you know, allow that creation and support the creation of, you know, such a window. Because if we look globally, what we find is that imagine on frontier, um, you know, markets uh, or economies are currently challenged on the back of, you know, you know, the strengthening U.S. dollars. I give you two examples. News flows around the world today indicates that two countries in particular, um, you know, talking about, you know, Ghana and also talking about, you know, one other, you know, emerging uh, market country, you know, they are unable to, 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 to fund their FX position to import, you know, food into their country, largely because they just do not have, you know, this FX. So if Nigerian government is looking at supporting the manufacturing sector via the provision of FX to them, I think it is good and it will partly solve our, you know, you know, current, you know, challenges around, uh, you know, food security because they will be able to bring you know, food for those that are into the food business and for those that are into non-food businesses, they will also be able to bring in raw materials and so on for, for production. So it is not a bad decision in my view. Mm, a very good one. But on the other hand, still staying with Forex before we wrap up this segment of the conversation, uh, the broad exchange operators have come out again to say some of the policies of the CBN seems not to be working. With all of the goodies being put out, you, know, you get uh, your Naira for dollar scheme, the rebate, and uh, all of this. Uh, do you think that we need the BDCs to play actively in this market to help stabilize things? Well, I think it is still very you know, early you know, in the current period that the CBN has considered, because what the CBN has done is to move away from you know, what it used to do in terms of the structure of the market. And when you change the structure of a market, you should give it a bit of time to see how effective you know, your changes are. And, and I think you know, it is too early to, to say that you know, the CBN's um, you know, sort of you know, structure is not working, you know, particularly with respect to the BDCs, you know, participating in the market. Let us give it, you know, a bit more time. The CBN is looking at Dangote Refinery. It is looking at, you know, offshore inflows and some other inflows. They were in Washington, D.C. last week discussing with, you know, foreign investors 
So I think we should give it a bit of more time to see you know, how this play, plays out because the CBN really does not want the BDCs back in the market. And there must be something they're banking on. Let us give them the next you know, couple of months to see how that plays out. So let's look at the projection now. Um, I don't want us to really talk about the budget because we've talked about it in so many uh, angles of it, of course. But the only question I have for you is looking at the projections and about 65% is going to be used to service debt. I'm worried. I don't know if you are. I am worried. And I think, you know, it, it partly speaks to the need for, for the government, you know, to slow down. On, 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 our, on our debt, you know, sort of issuance. And they cannot slow down if, you know, we do not have the revenue coming in as expected. Um, in, in a revenue slippage of as much as 50% is way too much for, for any government across the world to operate effectively. So what I believe should happen is that, you know, they should really focus on where the problem is which is the oil sector. So we have seen some appointments around you know, security agents you know, to watch over the pipelines. We have heard several news around the arrest of some ships and, and so on. If they can maintain that momentum, my sense tells me that by next year, we should be telling a better story as far as our oil sector is concerned. They should sanitize that sector completely. That will help in my view. Mm. Well, it's on that optimistic note, I might have to uh, wrap up this conversation. But uh, Mr. Uh, Ibrahim, before I let you go, let's look at our market, talking about our capital market now. Do you think that we will still attract expected investments moving on, looking at the challenges and the election ahead? I like your views on that. So let's take a look. If we are expecting investments from outside of Nigeria, let us be optimistic that you know inflows you know will begin to trickle in uh from the external investors from like the second half of next year by then the elections will have been over by then there would have been most likely the cabinet in place by then the government will have rolled out their plans by then my sense tells me that you know the new administration will have you know touched down running at a high speed bearing in mind the terrible situation that we are in currently. Well, it's a good way to leave it. Interesting conversation there. I've been speaking to Director Research and Strategy at Chapel Hill, Denham. Uh, is Mr. Tajuddin Ibrahim. Do enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you so much uh, for brilliant contributions to the show.